Hello, hello, and welcome. My name is J.D. Grosspitz, lead singer and streaming talent of Malignant Bear. We're doing something very different today. We are playing Phasmophobia in VR. So uh, I'm going to apologize in advance because I know this is going to be incredibly uh, scuff and jank and whatever word you want to throw in there. So this is actually my second attempt at recording this in VR, and the first time it was uh, not good. <laughs> Um, so that's why we're doing it again. So I mentioned that I wanted to do something special for our stream anniversary or one year stream anniversary, and this was it. Not Phasmophobia in particular, although this is a good test case, but VR in general. So I am streaming this with an HP Reverb G2, and this is the second revision of the headset. Um, and I, I picked this up a while ago. Uh, I got it on a very good sale, and. I've been loving it, but I wanted to have more time to kind of explore and experiment with it and get used to it, uh, because VR does have a learning curve to it, and it's something you definitely have to get used to. We'll move away from the music so it's a little bit quieter while I rant, um, or not rant, but more so just kind of talk about things. Um, but yeah, VR, um, it takes some getting used to. You have to figure out how everything works, and you have to get used to the movement and having the headset on and everything else. And it, it's an adjustment. So to try to jump right into it and do any sort of longer form content wouldn't be good. So I've been getting used to it for a while. And this is only attempt two or three of actually recording things in VR. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it'll be better than the first time. So the way this is working is I'm capturing just Phasmophobia, the game window in OBS. And the microphone audio is the headset's microphone. And I have every possible filter on in OBS, because otherwise it would be uh, just a mess, and it probably still is. But this is what we're getting with it. <laughs> um, because of the way the headset works, the speakers are attached to it, so I can't put a headset on over top of this, and to try to move around uh, in, in the real world, and then position myself to actually use my real microphone, regardless of the boom arm that it's on, wouldn't work. So this is how we're doing this. Um, I will say this is really cool. Uh, I've been loving this. I think this is uh, this was a fantastic purchase. The headset itself is fantastic. Um, it's two. Each display is it's almost 4K in each eye uh, and 90 hertz, which is amazing. It's it's the best visual fidelity of any headset on the market, um, or at least any mainstream one, I should say. The downside is the hand tracking. So as you can see, my fingers are not moving. Uh, my hands are definitely moving in real life, but my fingers are not. So this headset lacks the sophisticated individual digit tracking of the Oculus and the Vive and the Index, which is a shame, and that's that's the big failing of it. So most games still work with it, which is fine, but yeah, you can't get quite as in-depth with it, which is a shame. So, you know, give and take with it. Uh, I didn't want to go with the Oculus route. I've, I've messed with them before. It's cool, but, you know, uh, it has some, some other side issues there. And the Index is just incredibly expensive, and it requires a full room-scale VR setup, which I'm not going to do because I just don't have the space for it. So this was the best option, and like I said, even, even with the failings that it has, I'm still liking it. So um, I'm staying relatively still right now, and let's just kind of talk and look at things here. So we're here in the lobby of Phasmophobia. You can see it's decorated all for Christmas. So we're recording this a little bit in advance, but we're going to put it out for uh, the winter solstice because it's the longest night of the year. It seemed appropriate to play a ghost hunting game during that. I know, makes sense. Um, and again, still Christmas themed. Uh, and of course, when you think of Christmas, you think of Christmas tree, presents, um, cornhole, bago, uh, sack toss, whatever you want to call it. And of course, ring toss. So we'll go over here and we'll see if I can do this without breaking anything in my room. Let's see, so you can pick things up in VR. Oop, and you can sort of throw them. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's tricky. Uh, it is possible, I've done it before, but it's embarrassing to try to do here. So as you can see, I'm doing the tap the thumbstick to move, the snap movement, because I found that that's easier for motion sickness, both for me and any potential viewers. Um, it's, it's still weird and it takes some getting used to for sure, but I think it's the best way around it. Um, I'm also doing teleport to move again, because I don't have full room scale. Um, 
I don't have a whole lot of place to go. So, uh, thumbstick movement is just a, a speed run of motion sickness. Uh, and it's a shame that there's some games that don't allow teleport to move. For example, Blade and Sorcery. It's a very cool concept, but it's either room scale or thumbstick. So, uh, no go on that one. But this is still very cool. Again, play some basketball here. Maybe. Kobe! Uh oh, where'd that go? Oh no. Oh no, it went over there to where the ghost is. Let's get startled real quick. <laughs> I'm so scared. Alright. This is really cool though. Um, it's neat to be able to see things and experience things in VR. And again, I'm hoping, hoping that this is recording well and properly. Um, given the limitations of it, I can't really see what's happening. Uh, it, again, it's... This is really neat to experience, but as far as something to record and stream, that's a whole nother matter. So, <gasps> spooky scary skeleton. He's not done up for the holidays at all. What a shame. Very, very gross looking though, that's for sure. Some flesh still on there. All right, so um, I picked Phasmophobia as the game to do our first sort of uh, VR recording test thing on. Uh, because I'm experienced with it, I've played this quite a bit, both on and off stream, and I've done it in VR a couple times. Uh, and the first time I did it in VR, actually, to make this work better, uh, one of the other members of the band, he played it regular and helped me out with it, and we got to experience that way so I could kind of get used to everything. And it's a cool experience. Um, it's a shame he's not here now, because it's it's going to be a little bit harder to do um, by myself, but that's fine. So we're going to do single player. You can see it freaks out there for a split second. All right, so what we're going to do, because this is going to be incredibly dangerous, and we could potentially die, is we're only going to go with the default items plus salt and the strong flashlight. Everything else we don't really need. This is all just extra stuff. This is the core items you need to actually find the ghost. So we'll go back. We're going to go to the easiest house, which is Tanglewood Street House. Select. Ready up. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can talk about in here before we go in. There's not a whole lot, so we just kind of need to see and experience how this works. So, and again, just hope for the best that this is actually recording properly. Start it up. I don't know what this is going to display on screen. It might just be the, the blank kind of window. I don't know if you can like, see my... See the things there and hear my joints creaking and aching in the background. So, we can mess with things. Need the keys, of course. Alright, so we have to check the whiteboard. That's the first thing you do every time you get into Phasmophobia. Discover what type of ghost we're dealing with. Have a member of your team witness a ghost event. Cleanse the area near the ghost using smudge sticks. We didn't bring them. Detect ghost presence with a motion sensor. We didn't bring one. I've done some more investigating for you. Looks like the ghost name is Dorothy Brown. Only respond to people who are alone. Well, it should be good for us. <laughs> um, so, uh, of course, Phasmophobia works by listening to your voice the entire time you're playing. So it's going to be listening to me talking. And it does kind of a neat thing where you can, you know, as you're just talking, it'll listen to you. And that's your local speech. Or if you reach up and touch your left ear um, in, in the real world or, or also in game, you can see my hand going up there. Um, that is the walkie talkie. Uh, also, another ear thing is... If I can do it, right? Your journal is uh, nestled above your right ear for some reason. So you can, you can pull that out that way and kind of go through it like this. And see all the different things in it, which is cool. You don't need it yet, though. So in default Phasmophobia, you can carry three things at a time. And in, in VR, as, as we look down, we can see I have a belt here. It's not quite where my actual waist is in real life. Um, for one thing, it's... Oh, about a foot in front of my actual pelvis. <laughs> um, but, uh, and I'm definitely not that wide. So, but you can see there's kind of some little notches here, so you can actually attach things to your belt. And I have to be very ginger with this because I don't want to break things. All right, so what we're going to do is... I'm trying to think what the best way to do this was. No, put that there for a second. 
All right, so I want to go in with a couple items to start with. And my usual rule of thumb when I do this uh, to help find the ghost very quickly is flashlight, EMF reader, and camera. And the camera's important. Uh, it's Bony brand. I never noticed that before. Um, the camera's important because on every level there's a bone. Haha, <laughs> it works. Um, and you can take a picture of it and then pick it up to get some money. And that's how you get quick cash. So, but we're going to do salt instead. And VR is a little weird because to open doors in VR, you have to physically move them. Um, which, you know, makes sense. Put that on. So you can see the EMF reader is going to stay on on our belt, which is cool. So we'll come back for the other things later. So even though we can potentially carry four things because we have, you know, our hand, um, we need a free arm to be able to do anything. Come on, get closer. There we go. We can cheese it a little bit. Um, ooh, I'm stuck in things, so no. The dangers of teleport to move. I also dropped the flashlight at some point. I don't know how I manage that. Must have bumped something. So, the first time I attempted to record this, um, I punched the side of my computer several times. So we're going to try to avoid that this time. And I apologize because the footage is going to be moving a lot. It's... There's slight vibrations just because, you know, my... Your head is not perfectly stationary 100 or 24-7. And it's worse because I'm talking, so my mouth is moving, and as a result, the headset is moving. So, Okay, so we're going to drop that there. So I've, I've tried different methods to, uh, to do different things here, and, and try to get better recording, and I just, I just can't. So, so you can see where... Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's ways around it, I'm just bad and lazy. Reoccurring theme here. But, <laughs> all right, so we want to we'll turn lights on. And what we want to do is just kind of walk around, go into a couple different rooms, see what's up. EMF reader should tell us if the ghost is nearby. Um, and we can also do salt, actually. Oop, I didn't mean to put all of them right there. Well, we'll definitely know if the ghost comes through there. I was going to say the pro strat for Tanglewood House is you want to put a thing of salt like here-ish, one where I did, and then one near the front. Um, and that's that's kind of the way around that. All right, we can drop that now. We don't need it anymore. Okay. But again, EMF reader is on, which is good. Go in some of these rooms. So you can see when we move a little further, that's what counts as sprinting. So you can hear my character is uh, winded easily. In VR in general, I will say, even even just standing here, you know, like I'm not... Ooh, Ouija board. Um, even just standing here, I'm not, you know, I'm not moving around because it's not room scale. I have no reason to. But uh, it's, you know, it's a little more taxing than it would be to do this sort of normally, if, if you're just sitting. Not that I'm that out of shape, I mean, I certainly am, but not not to that level, <laughs> but, uh, you know. Why do I keep doing that? Stay there. The bigger thing with VR, um, and why you have to kind of do it in bursts, is, there's the bone, okay, that's, that's good, is that, I, I mean, for one, even with getting used to it, there is still definitely some uh, some nausea to it, some some motion sickness uh, that can happen, and you just have to kind of get used to things. Um, so, and also the headset uh, can get pretty hot. <laughs> what is that? Radio turning on. I hear it. Okay, that's good. That means we don't have to go in the basement. Okay, so it's in the kids' room. Um, we'll do. We'll just go in there. In the boys' room. Yep. 
So it's definitely been in here. EMF readers ticking up. You can, you can hear that. That's good. Nope, nope. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna leave that in here, and this is good. So now we can we can run back to the van, and drop that there. We don't need it anymore. Well, we do, but what we need more is the ability to hold everything that we possibly can. Right, so we're running out of time here. Let's see. All right, so we're gonna go bold. We wanna set up all the items we can inside the house. Again, this is just, this is neat to be able to do this in VR. It's definitely a very different experience. Maybe I'll die in VR and we'll see. You die in the game, you die in real life. I don't see ghost orbs, but that's okay. Still sort of see what I'm doing here. And that's incredibly awkward, but what we want to do is kind of... Can I finagle that in a way that makes any sense? No. Oh, the power is out. Okay. Well, that's potentially problematic. So you want to put that there. Okay. And then that should be fine. Yeah. Right, let's get out before we die. We can. Flashlight again, we might want that. Okay, so we're good. Good to go there. Put that back on our waist. And. It winded so easily. Oh my goodness. What else do we want? Double flashlight, of course. So they both stay on, which is kind of neat. Alright, um... I don't see ghost orbs. So we have to watch the camera here and see if anything shows up on it. Look at my hands, ooh! Weird. I don't see anything. So the the good thing about the ghost being in the front room is that uh, we can just kind of take a peek in there. We had the spirit box at one point. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember putting it anywhere. It didn't write in the book. Um, I don't see it in there. I don't see handprints either, although it hasn't done anything in a while, so. Got a bear in there. Ooh. Ooh raves in VR. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll go back in. If we die, we die. Who's that? Oh, that's like the line of movement. Up ahead there. Couldn't figure it out. Um, put that there, put that there. And I know we, we talked about getting the bone and I saw it and then didn't take pictures of it because we ran out of time. That's okay. Yeah. Heard the EMF going off. So as much as we need details, we can be smart about the details that we get. It's not actively hunting. Oh, it wrote in the book, though. Okay. 
Like that, nice little pictures in there. Okay. Uh, check things again. Again, this is a good one for VR, because we can just cheese it. Just kind of look around. I'm disappointed I screwed up the salt, though. That's That could have gone better. The power's back on, apparently, too. The, at least the clock is. It's hard to tell. Maybe it's a magic clock. It's got battery backup. It used to be a thing. Not so much anymore. Yeah, the power's still off, because that light's off. Even though the switch is on. Alright, we'll go bold. Just we actually we will be smart. We'll pick um Didn't see any ghost orbs. We did have ghost writing. I don't think it ever hit level five. Uh those poltergeists would be moving a whole lot more stuff. Could be spirit. Pick spirit. That way, just in case we die, we'll still have a guest recorded. <laughs> yeah, where is the spirit box? I know I had it. Dropped it there somehow. I must have done that while I was messing with the camera. Okay. Be even more bold. Hide in the ghost room. Ooh. Well then. Okay. No, screw you. Rude. Alright, so we need to get out of here now. That death. Did you hear that? Ooh, hoo, hoo, we did it! All right. Definitely not going back for the bone, though. That's a little too too frightening. You have to look down a lot, which I know is less than ideal for footage. Um, but again, no, nothing about this is ideal. This, I I wanted to record this because I think it is cool, and we're going to be recording some or er, streaming something else later on. But. Uh, like, VR is something you have to experience more so than see, so. Alright. But, again, for sure spirit. If it was Poltergeist, we definitely would have known. It would have thrown things at us. Watch me be wrong. Look at my hands. Ooh, that one's... <laughs> that was especially terrifying. What? Completely sideways on me. Oh no. What's it doing? Like really? Okay, that's... that's a first. Well, it's... I mean, it's not a first. I'm wrong all the time in this, but... A poltergeist that never threw anything at us. Usually they're good at that, and we were in that room for a while. You can see, in total time inside, six minutes time in ghost room, three minutes. Zero ghost events, that's probably why. Well, okay. We tried, and we didn't die. That's the important part. Anyway, this is Phasmophobia in VR. It's pretty neat. Um, trying to think how I can end the stream without breaking a million things on my desk. And all right, so this is gonna it's gonna look weird. My apologies. I'm gonna lift the headset up to uh, to go to the end screen and all that. But yeah, this is cool. Um, I apologize because I know this footage is gonna be scuffing weird and all that. Um, my thoughts are kind of disjointed over it too. Again, I just kind of wanted to to showcase something in VR before we do a few other things with it. And I thought this was a good one. And again, Winter Solstice, it's not a scary night, but it's the longest night of the year, so I figured it was this was appropriate. So anyway, Phasmophobia VR. It's a good game. 
It's still a good game in VR, and VR is pretty neat. But anyway, uh, as always, hope you enjoyed this, and until next time, have a good one.